away for the fourth, you might be screwed. And no one has the nards to take the blame for the brewing travel nightmare that might see thousands of flights canceled or heartlessly delayed. AAA is predicting 48 million people will travel by car and air this glorious fourth holiday. And while many of us will be eager to party elsewhere, we may be forced to sit in stinky airports nibbling Auntie Anne's pretzels with strangers. The airline industry got $54 billion in COVID relief because they were too big to fail, tried too dumb to survive. In their infinite and well buoyed wisdom, airlines furloughed hundreds of thousands of employees. And get this, they encouraged pilots to retire early in the middle of a pilot shortage. Long before the pandemic, there were too few Roger Murdochs and Clarence Overs in those lonely cockpits. Maybe big airlines assumed we were all going to die, that we'd all eaten the fish, and no one would ever fly again. So they also told the few remaining pilots to take a powder and move to the villages. So now pilots from Delta to Southwest are picketing like it's a Latvian garbage strike, and we're the ones who will be left waiting in interminable lines, trying to keep our cool while hot under the collar mansplainers yell at exhausted airline customer service reps. So what's the solution? Obviously, start selling black market baby food at an unethical markup and fly private. It's really the only solution to a government created problem that gives money, excuses, and plenty of cover to entire sectors whose heads are so far large, lodged up their own cargo compartments they can't hear the faint cries of distressed customers who are the ones drowning from the fallout of the big COVID bailout. And that's the memo. <laughs> Just this week, more than 2,000 flights have already reportedly been canceled. Talk about a flight mare. Don't pinch me. If you're flying and you're lucky to get on a plane, some travelers say, prepare for a long trip. Travel with a pillow and a blanket and water once you go through security. Make sure you have your toiletries. Make sure you have some food so you're, um, you're good and full when you get on that plane. Yeah, I'm going to be good and full. I already got my little fireball bottles. What? Um, how much worse will it get? The man panel is back. Tim Carney, Richard Fowler, and Dave Smith. How much worse will it get, Tim? You tell me everything. I, I wouldn't fly, and I really mean this. As a patriotic American, you should stay home. You should... Get You should not even get in your car. You should walk down the street to the nearest fireworks show because that's what America is. It's, it's really local displays of patriotism. It, it can get a lot worse in, the, in those airports. I mean, these, these are bad, but I remember it being worse. And when you're spending the night in the airport, your, your week, your weekend, everything is just ruined. There's not enough competition in this industry for a variety of reasons. And, so, and they know that people are going to keep coming back until those people say, you know what? I'm going to stay closer to home, and I'm going to go down to the corner, and I'm going to watch our local Boy Scouts put on their fireworks show. Can you fly with fireworks, Richard, and bring them to the airport? <laughs> you can. You cannot. Oh, okay. Good to know. Wait, hold on. <laughs> doot, 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 doot. Okay. Uh, so, Richard, what's the, what's the solution? Just fire everybody? Listen, my solution... Uh, my solution is to support the flight attendants and the fire and, and the pilots who are saying that we should get higher wages. To your point in your monologue, here's the truth. These airlines got billions of dollars from the federal government. They didn't pass any of that money onto their workers. And now they're asking their workers to work longer hours for less pay. And to me, that sounds unfair. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, you know, they uh, a lot of the pilots took a powder. So what do you do, Dave? Obviously, we need free market solutions here, and the more the government gets involved, the worse it gets. Why is that? Well, because, you know, that's what the government does, and so that's always going to be the case. Uh, what do you do here? I mean, you, you could start by dropping this ridiculous requirement that pilots have to be vaccinated. And in fact, uh, one Southwest uh, pilot was just saying the other day that this is at the heart of this entire thing. They're passing over resumes of uh, qualified pilots because they're not vaccinated. A whole bunch of pilots retired early for that reason because they didn't want to get the vaccine. And as we all know at this point, this is just so stupid. It has nothing to do with keeping anybody safe. Look, I, I'm unvaccinated and I had COVID like three and a half weeks ago. I'm safer than any vaccinated person.
is. And th this whole thing is just so stupid. Like the idea that someone who was double vaccinated in the summer of 2021 is somehow safer for other people than someone who had COVID this year. No science backs that up, but we're still insisting on this dumb policy. And it's awful. I mean, think about how many holidays have been robbed from the American people over the last two and a half years. I mean, even last Christmas, Fauci was still telling people not to go, you know, to, you know like eat outside in the middle of December <laughs> yeah. or something like that, you know? And people want to go and, and be with their families. I appreciate what Tim said, and I do kind of agree with the spirit of that, but there's also people who want to go and be with their families, and it's necessary for them to, to get on a plane to do so. Look, I'm, I'm the exception. I travel every weekend, and I'm not leaving on the 4th of July weekend, but it's still bugging me. Hopefully I'll see you out there in Vegas for Freedom Fest, Woo! Ken. Ooh, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be at Freedom Fast. Uh, worst case scenario, I'm gonna Thelma and Louisa with my daughters, and we're gonna drive <laughs> from go. LA to Vegas if for some reason. Not the off the cliff part, though. No, Just no, the no. Part. And we're gonna yeah. find Brad Pitt at some point. I think I think that's gonna be pretty <laughs> spectacular. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm I'm flying, I'm traveling, I'm going to see family. We're going to celebrate the fourth the way we do uh, every year about around a bunch of uh, uppity rich people. And uh, we're we're gonna <laughs> light Roman candles in their faces out of love. That is out of love and patriotism. All right. Well, flights aren't the only things getting canceled for no reason. A professor at Cornell University is claiming the school has removed a bust of Abraham Lincoln and a plaque of his famous Gettysburg Address. After someone complained, the university is denying the allegation. They say that both the statue and the engraving were always meant to be temporary, even though they'd been on display since 2013. So what is so offensive about Honest Abe? Uh, I, I don't understand this. Like, I get really mad when they pull down statues of my boyfriend, Ulysses S. Grant, uh, but I'm always shocked when progressives go after Lincoln. It's Abraham Lincoln, Tim. Well, so on Cornell, we don't know all the facts, right? Maybe somebody was supposed to take it down in 2015 and forgot to and just, just got reminded about it now. But other places have gone after Lincoln. And so first of all, he wasn't a perfect man. I, on slavery, the most important issue of his time, he was wrong before he, in the end, became right. But frankly, there's an all-encompassing philosophy. It, it's sort of a, a year zero philosophy that before today, all human beings were so corrupt and were so falling, fallen that honoring them at all is a mistake. This is a guy who, again, did not believe in equality between the races, and he said stuff publicly to that effect. If you're going to count every little sin that has to do with racism against a man, then Lincoln is going to go too. Yeah, and, and you do have to look at the bigger picture, Richard. You know, you, you do have to look at uh, what he was able to accomplish in you know keeping the union together at great cost and eventually he did come around to realize that the war was in fact about slavery and and freeing enslaved people in states who were uh, committed very much to the abhorrent institution listen i under, I, I agree i think history will, well, history bears out that lincoln was indeed somebody who helped end America's original sin, which was enslavement. I think it's also important to remember that when we have these debates about whether or not we should pull down the statues and, and keep the statues, I think it's also really important to remember where are the, you know, the monuments and the commemorations to the, the folks that were enslaved that fought back. And I think that should be something we should talk about, right, more often. It's like, how do we commemorate the Nat Turners of the world who rebelled against the actual institution mm -hmm. while they were in the institution and commemorating their legacy and commemorating their fight back? And Frederick Douglass. Who also really and him too. really <laughs> liked Abraham Lincoln. Like he really liked him. He thought he was amazing. And he thought everything was gonna change, which is one of the saddest things about Frederick uh, Douglass. I'm not sure if that's true, but yes it is. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It is absolutely true. Uh, and he fought very hard to defend the Constitution. And um, you know, he believed that people who were in his former situation would not have to uh, meet the harshness that they, in fact, continued to do because of Andrew Johnson. Um, you hate Lincoln, right, Dave? Well, I, Kennedy, I hate all presidents. And I hate, uh, <laughs> you know, I hate the, this culture of, like, um, I'm offended, so something must be removed. And history is history, so I don't believe in, like, removing statues. But I hate presidents more than I hate that. And, look, the two worst 
institutions in the history of America were slavery, and right number two after that is conscription. And yes. Lincoln's entire army was a conscripted army. And again, look, the Emancipation Proclamation hey man, didn't even free slaves. Yeah. Well, look, and the, the yes, that's true. And the, but the Emancipation Proclamation didn't even free slaves in the North. It was like a war tactic. Um, so I think I think Lincoln was a tyrant. I think that the war was about slavery to the South, but it really wasn't to the North. And so a lot of this is kind of like you know Lincoln is made to be more of a hero than he actually was. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the there were real villains. Um, in that war, but I, I think Lincoln is up there with them. So I don't like removing any of these statues. I'd rather remove like their actual legacy. Like w there was one college that removed uh, a Woodrow Wilson statue, and I'd much rather remove the income tax and the Federal Reserve. <laughs> uh, and the UN. While you're at it, the League of Nations. Yes. Thanks, Woodrow. Uh, he didn't right. get it done, but he started it. Yeah, he sure did, and he sucked at everything. And he was also uh, an avowed racist. Um, Tim, yep. Richard, and Dave, Man Panel, great to see you on this hump night. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy.